attending Gethsemane Missionary Baptist Church this morning. We know it was bad out there. I came all the way from Detroit. And God is good. <laughs> and um, we will be praying for you as you make your journey home. Remember, Gethsemane will start tonight praying for you, and we'll be praying for you until your plan. Well, we'll be praying for you in the name of Jesus. And we know you'll make a safe trip home. And um, I know you from somewhere. I know you. Yes. One of our schools we passed. So I know you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is your second time here. Our pastor has a saying, the first time you come, you're a visitor. The second time, you're seeking. The third time, you're ours. Praise the Lord. Now is that time that we can all stretch our legs. It's time to give. God has been so, so very good to us. He's opened up doors that we had no idea they could be open. He's gotten us into jobs that we thought we would never get. It's, it's just been so many things. And then we look around at how good he is to Gethsemane. Not only Gethsemane, this whole United States. Because we need to stay on our prayers, the things that we're experiencing. But God is a God all by himself. And I just thank him for it. He told us to give back 10%. And we go to a restaurant and it starts with 15%. And we give it, and give it just as happy. But what do we do for God? Let us be more diligent in our giving this year. Heavenly Father, as we come to you today, we're just coming to you saying thank you. Lord, thank you for all of your many blessings that you've bestowed upon us. Lord, as we come to bring back our tithes and offerings, we just say thank you. We say thank you. Lord, bless the ones that's giving. Bless the ones that don't have it to give. And bless the ones that decide to keep it in their pocket. Just touch today, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Would you please stand and follow the ushers around? Come on from the choir, top choir. Oh!
for he's all. Say man, let us say man again. Let us say man one more time. It is a blessing to be here today through uh, these uh, challenging travel conditions for many of us. As I shared at eight o'clock, um, we had an intimate group, but nevertheless, the Lord was uh, good, and there was more folks who showed up than I expected. Amen and anticipated. And of course, as I shared with them, uh, we are a diverse group of folk. Here at GMBC, we have folks who live as far uh, north as above 21 Mile Road. Um, Brother Bishop, who comes, and he was here at 8 o'clock on time this morning. Amen, as always, amen. And so we are definitely grateful to him. And folks live as far south that I know of as Toledo, amen, and Sister uh, Davis. And so we, we're sort of everywhere, so everyone's travel conditions is different. And so uh, we're glad to be here. And as I always tell you, when the weather is inclement, use wisdom. Amen. Use wisdom. Amen. I mean, there are various ways um, to connect with us. If you're able to make it here safely, we'd be glad to see you. If not now, a couple people I talked to this morning, I told them if you're not able to make it, you can go to Facebook Live and you can live stream. Amen. And you can give through Giblify. Amen. Amen. So we got you covered. Amen. All the way around. Um, but it's always good to have you here at, at the service. And so we're grateful to God for those of you that braved the elements and came out to our visitors. We're definitely glad to have uh, Sister Worthy, currently Don Worthy, um, who's uh, with us, Rosalind Worthy, um, who's with us. And she will be hosting our um, AIDS training immediately following. I wasn't for certain if that was going to be postponed because of the weather being a little inclement, but she made it out, and so those that have signed up, we definitely want you to go over and to uh, get in the class, and she'll be back on Tuesday as well. Amen for those, uh, but today was for primarily for those who cannot make it during the week and want to be a part of this. I think it's something that every church should have an open heart and open mind to, to those that are suffering with HIV and AIDS, and we can no longer buy into the stigma of that get what they deserve, amen, but by grace, amen. I don't believe everyone gets diseases because they deserve it, amen. You cannot tell me folks who have cancer, they deserved it, amen. Amen, some things just happen, but nevertheless, we should be uh, compassionate enough and loving enough, so we want you to be mindful of that. We want you to pay attention to all the announcements that is listed in your bulletin, and uh, I get, before I get in trouble this week, uh, Mother Hamp was on me last week because she said, Pastor, you didn't mention the fact about you being honored. So you all know how I am about all this stuff. Amen. I'm, I'm, I'm honored every year, the first Sunday in October, first weekend. That's, that's No honor gets higher than that to me. Amen. But um, there is a flyer that was just delivered. Uh, the National Christians in Action are having a uh, prayer and gospel tribute on Saturday the 18th um, at the Christ Temple City of Refuge. The address is listed here in the bulletin. And um, one of the special things that's supposed to happen, I'm supposed to be honored uh, for being uh, Pastor of the Year uh, for 2020. <laughs> but as I stated before, Personally, I don't need any outside endorsement. Every year, you all make me feel like pastor of the year. So that's a nice thing, but it's really not. Two weeks, so I don't know what I've done in two weeks <laughs> to win this award, amen. I don't know what I did in two weeks, amen. Um, but nevertheless, for those, um, they're asking for uh, music. I don't know if it's going to be a praise team. I don't know if it'll be the choir. Um, but as you see here, they're asking for music to be presented on that day. For those that can and make it, I do understand because it's occurring. It's also Gap Weekend. And with occurring, amen, amen. We got the concert on that Sunday. Um, uh, and so we're looking forward to that. And so I know that you all will be rehearsing on that Saturday. So 
Um, we'll figure something out. Again, it's uh, I thank God for the acknowledgement, but uh, home is always more important to me. Amen. So if you're able to make it, fine. If not, I do understand. Now, there are two handouts, and you know we generally don't give handouts in our bulletins unless we just absolutely have to. One is uh, we're forming a business directory. And what we want to do is other uh, cultures do, they support their own. Y'all too quiet. They support their own, amen. Which means if you have a viable business or you have business skills and you have a business, um, we should be able to support one another within our church family, amen. And so I'm asking you to fill this out and to turn this in so that we can begin to communicate and we can begin to support within our church family and before we support outside of our church family. Now let me put this out there. If you fill this out and you have a business, if you do not take care of business, we will let everyone know your business. Amen. I mean, I'm just being honest with you. If, I, if I'm going to endorse what you do, you need to be able to stand behind what you do. Amen? Now, we are family, and so we may have to come to you and tell you, hey, you, you know, as the old folks say, lick that cow one more time. Amen? Um, but we're looking forward to um, understanding that, again, we want you to let us know what business you provide so that we may support you, but when we support you, we look for you to be business-like and professional in what you do. Secondly, there's also a registra registration form. Um, we're asking everyone to fill this out. I know these can be laborious for us sometimes, but the reality of it is is that um, our children are in school, and every year we have to fill out forms times three. Amen. And so uh, this is just part of the process. This allows the church to keep your information have the most accurate and current information for you. We do not sell your information. It is kept in-house. Um, the reason why this is important is that every year I send out Christmas cards to all of those within our church family. And every year I get Christmas cards returned back to me because I did not have the most adequate, accurate and correct information for you. So if you didn't receive the Christmas card, it's not that the pastor is playing Grinch on you is that your Christmas card came back to me because we didn't have your current address. And so this is, will allow us to have the most current information for you because anything can happen at any time. Amen? And so I'm asking you, dear sir, dear ma'am, fill this out. You can turn these both in during offering time. You can turn them in to the ushers, and we'll make certain that we get, we get them to um, our secretary. Uh, we just want to make certain that we do things in decency and order, but I just wanted you to be informed why we're doing what we do. We want you to pay attention to all of the announcements. And on next week, amen, we'll have a special uh, Super Bowl announcement. Amen. De Deke was ready to do it today, but he wanted the Lord, you know, he wanted the music and everything else. So we want to do it right. Amen. And so uh, we want to come with our hearts and minds ready and prepared. And so we're looking forward to a wonderful uh, celebration. It, Super Bowl is playoffs are shaping up. A little different than a whole lot of folk. A lot of folk got hurt yesterday. Amen. Amen. I ain't had no dog in the fight, so. <laughs> but nevertheless, uh, we, uh, we're we looking forward to a, a wonderful uh, celebration. And again, we want to be mindful of all the announcements that have been printed in our bulletin. Now we'll be blessed with more song inspirations from our choir. And then we'll come back for prayer.
Come on, from the top again. Hallelujah. For the Lord our God, for, for the Lord our God is almighty. Yes, the Lord our God. Yes, the Lord our God is omnipotent. The Lord. The Lord our God. He is wonderful. Come on, from the top again. Hallelujah. Salvation. Salvation and glory. Honor and power unto the Lord our God. For the Lord our God. For. Let's go from the top again. No music. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, all over this room. Salvation and glory. Salvation and glory. Honor and power. Honor and power unto the Lord. Come on, let that resonate in your spirit. For the Lord our God. Altos, all praises be all. Wonderful. That's how about good to us. Come on.
Come on, join in some pranos. Come on, alto. Oh. oh. Let's praise our God in this place. Come on. Let's lift our hands in worship to the King of Kings, to the Lord of Lords. He's worthy of all our praise. Can you give it to him on this morning? Can you give it to him on this morning? He's a worthy God. He's a mighty God. He's a holy God. Hallelujah. 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 David's family in our prayers. Not only are they recovering and dealing with the passing of Deacon Carl, an aunt passed and her homegoing service was this past Friday in D.C. And as we currently speak, Deacon Jack Davis is in the hospital as well. And so we're asking special prayer for that family. Uh, Deacon Harper was also in the hospital all week and we're asking for prayer for him amen mother main was in the hospital and she is home now we're praying for her sister wiley is your husband still in the hospital is he home now he's still sister wiley's husband brother wiley is in the hospital and we're praying for him and we're just praying because we know what god is able to answer prayers i said we know a god that is able to answer prayers and so we're praying for all of us and all of our family and all of those that have experienced loss of loved ones that are dealing with the pain and dealing with the processing grief. We're asking for God to strengthen them as well. And those are the individuals who uh, situations came to mind for me to ask a special prayer for. Amen. Father God, as we come today, Father, we ask for healing right now. Lord, we ask for deliverance right now. Lord, we ask for comfort right now. Lord, we know you to be a doctor in a sick room. We know you to be a lawyer in a courtroom. We know you to be a, 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 a provider. Lord, we just say thank you for all that you have done for us, Lord. We thank you for just the opportunity to come and worship you, Lord. Give you the worship that you deserve. We say thank you today, Father God, for giving us use of our hands and use of our feet, Lord. We say thank you today. Lord, we thank you for letting us rise one more day, Lord. Lord, we know it was not because of anything that we've done to deserve it, but because only of your grace and mercy. We say thank you today. 
Lord, we give you the honor and glory that you deserve because you are God and God alone. So, Father God, we just come right now and lifting our hands in praise to you because we know that when praises come, go up, blessings come down. So, Father God, right now we give you the praise, but more so, Father God, we ask you to open the floodgates of heaven and pour out blessings right now. Lord, pour out a blessing that it will be too much just for us to receive, but we can bless others who are around us. Lord, we know that your, our cup will overflow with your blessing. So we say thank you today, Father God. Whatever the situation that we have right now that we don't see a way out, but we know that you have the, the way. So we say thank you for guidance today, Father God. Lord, we thank you for just being God. Lord, we thank you for the word that you are about to bring forth, Lord, because we know that without your word, there is no life. And we need life today, Father God. Lord, we ask right now that you anoint us from the top of our heads to the soles of our feet, Lord. Touch our hearts and minds right now today, Father God. Lord, we just need peace today, Father God. We need comfort today, Father God. Lord, whatever the trouble or whatever the situation, right now we leave it at the altar because we know that you are going to handle it. Father God, we say thank you for just being everything that we need. The heavens say hallelujah. Salvation and glory. Honor and power. Because you are wonderful. We are not wonderful, but you are wonderful. So we say thank you today. We praise you right now. We give you the highest praise. We, del we ask right now that you lose blessings in this place. We ask that you lose healing today, Father God. We ask that you lose a sound mind today, Father God. The songwriter said, I, I woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus. Father God, we ask right now that we keep our minds stayed on you because we know that if we seek your kingdom first, that everything that we want, everything that we need will be given to us. So, Father God, right now we ask that you do it. We don't know how you're going to do it, but we receive it today, Father God. Whatever it is, we say thank you today. Now, Father God, as our pastor comes to preach your word, Lord, we ask that we not see him but see you. Well, that we not hear him, but hear you, Father God, because we know that when your word comes, goes forth, it will not return to you void. So, Father God, let your word go forth, Lord. Lord, let somebody who, who does not know you or who has a relationship with you but is not in good standing come and say, I yield, I yield. What must I do to be saved? Lord, we ask for redemption today, Father God. We ask for resurrection today, Father God. We ask for restoration right now in the name of Jesus. Restore families who are broken apart. Restore health that was lost. Lord, we just ask for rest restoration. We thank you. And as the organist plays, he plays, Lord, make a way somehow. So, Father God, we ask right now just to make a way. Lord, guide our feet, guide our hearts, Lord. Not our will, but your will be done. We say thank you today, and we're going to be careful to do, to say and do things that give you the praise, give you the honor, give you the glory, because you deserve it and deserve it alone. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. If you have not been anointed and wish to be anointed, we ask that you remain standing so that the, those who are anointed can come around and anoint you. Like a ship that's tossed and driven, <laughs> that by the angry sea, when the storms of life they keep on raging, <laughs> and this fear is falls down on me. <laughs> I wonder what I have done that makes this race so hard for me to run. <laughs> oh, then I say to my soul, take courage, the Lord will make a way somehow. Come on, do y'all believe that? <laughs> The Lord will make a way somehow. Come on, help me sing it, y'all. 
when beneath the cross I bow. He will take away all of your sorrow. So just let him have your burdens now. <laughs> and with the loads of life, they get so heavy. <laughs> Y'all know this song. Come on, help me. Hey, there's a sweet release in no. Hey. The Lord will make a way. Hey, come on, one more time, hey. The Lord will make a way somehow. When beneath the cross I bow, He will take away all of your sorrow. So just let him have your prayers now. And with the lows of life, they get so heavy. And the way that shone upon my brow. There's a sweet relief in all. The Lord will make a way somehow. <laughs> Woo, thank you, Jesus. Woo, thank you, Lord. Mm. Amen. Y'all didn't know he had it like that, did y'all? Amen. Amen. We want to have now, uh, I was informed that all of our youth will be meeting downstairs. Amen. All of our youth will be meeting downstairs. Amen. And we're uh, preparing and getting ready because at the end of the month, we're going to have kicking it with the pastor with our young people. So we're asking all of our youth to go downstairs. Amen. To meet with them as well. And then, um, I forgot to mention um, that on this Tuesday, uh, Sweet Sweet, and that is Gabby. Um, we'll be having uh, her tonsils and adenoids removed, so we just ask in your prayers for her. Amen. As she goes through the process, amen, that many have gone through um, before her. And so we're asking God's prayer um, for all of you all. Um, and I know you, you've been doing it for a long time. You were praying for her before she arrived. Amen. And so we know what God is able to do. Um, so we want to be mindful of that. And again, uh, we want keep all of our various church uh, family that is sick with flu, pneumonia, uh, keep them in our prayers. And if you feel yourself coming down with something, get checked out. Amen. Unless you have a medical license, amen. Uh, don't be your own doctor, amen. Get checked out, amen, amen. You know your body better than anyone. If you're not feeling um, the way you should normally feel, then we want you to definitely getting ready. Was that the preparation song or you got one more? Or Okay. All right. Amen. 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 I thought so. Amen. I just thought I'd ask. Amen. Amen. Well, we, we are so grateful to God for uh, Brother Wright, Brother Tarnaris Wright. Amen. Amen. So grateful to God for him and, and our musicians. And we're just looking forward for what the Lord is going to do with our music ministry and the way the Lord is going to take it, amen. And I'm to the point now where wherever the Lord wants to do, I'm okay with it. Amen. However the Lord wants to lead it, we're going to follow it, amen. Uh, because when it's God's plans, it's always the best plan. Amen. So they'll come back with another song inspiration, and after which we'll um, have a word. We will probably get out earlier than you all have anticipated, amen. Because I don't have an hour sermon, amen. I've never had an hour sermon, amen. Definitely don't have one today, amen. Um, I, hopefully, I know that we have anticipated you all starting at 1230. And I know there's some folks coming from Detroit that want to come at 1230 as well. So there may be some time lag, but you can decide on how you want to do it with the training. Also, just before I forget, uh, we have a birthday today, amen. Brother John, amen. 
has reached the milestone of 80. Amen. Amen. He has, he has chosen one of the hardest ministries to be a part of, the soundboard. Amen. At 79, 80 years young, he's back there working it out. Amen. And so we thank God for him. Um, we want to keep him in our prayers as well because I believe this Tuesday, this Thursday, he is going to have a knee replacement. Amen. And so we're praying that the Lord will bless him through the process. Amen. And then he'll come out with bionic knees. Amen. Amen. Now we'll be blessed with some inspiration and then the sermon. Come on, put them hands together, y'all. He'll keep. He's a keeper. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. He's a keeper. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. He's a keeper. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. He's a keeper. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. He's a keeper. Yes, he is.
Lord, we thank you for keeping us when we could not keep ourselves. Lord, as a matter of fact, with all the security we have with the armed forces, when it comes down to it, unless you keep the city, all that we do is in vain. Lord, we come now to hear a word from you, O oh Lord. Unless you give us a word, there is no word for us. So, Lord, I'm asking you to take my mind and think your thoughts. Take my words and be your words, Lord. Use me in spite of me, O oh Lord. Lord, that I will speak with anointing and with power, Lord. I ask you to look beyond all of my faults and all of my shortcomings, Lord, and bless these people that have come out this day. Lord, there is a word for them, for those that have pressed their way, for those that are watching live stream, Lord. Lord, you know what they need to hear. So, Lord, I'm asking you to use me to deliver your word. In Jesus' name we pray. With power and anointing, amen and amen. Again, giving honor to God ahead of all life to all of you, my brothers and sisters. There is a word coming from the 12th chapter of the Acts of the Holy Spirit through the embodiment of the apostle. And it reads this way, the New Living Translation, the 12th chapter of the book of Acts, beginning at the first verse. About that time, King Herod Agrippa began to persecute some believers in the church. He had the apostle James, John's brother, killed with a sword. When Herod saw how much this pleased the Jewish people, he also arrested Peter. This took place during the Passover celebration. Then he imprisoned him, placing him under the guard of four squads of four soldiers each. Herod intended to bring Peter out for public trial after the Passover. But while Peter was in prison, the church prayed very earnestly for him. The night before Peter was to be placed on trial, he was asleep, fastened with two chains between two soldiers. Others stood guard at the prison gate. Suddenly, there was a bright light in the cell. And an angel of the Lord stood before Peter when the angel struck him on the side to awaken him and said, Quick, get up. And the chain fell off his wrist. Then the angel told him, Get dressed and put on your sandals. And he did. Now put on your coat and follow me, the angel ordered. So Peter left the cell following the angel, but at all the time he thought it was a vision. He didn't realize it was actually happening. They passed the first and second guard posts and came to the iron gate leading to the city. And this opened for them all by itself. So they passed through and started walking down the street and the angel suddenly left them. Peter finally came to his senses. It's really true, he said. The Lord has sent his angel and saved me from Herod and from what the Jewish leaders had planned to do to me. When he realized this, he went to the home of Mary, the mother of John Mark, where many were gathered for prayer. He knocked at the door from the gate, and a servant girl named Rhoda came to open it. When she recognized Peter's voice, she was overjoyed, so overjoyed that instead of opening the door, she ran back inside and told everyone, Peter is standing at the door. You're out of your mind they said. When she insisted, they decided it must be his angel. Meanwhile, Peter continued knocking. When they finally opened the door and saw him, they were amazed. I'd like to use a thought from which to preach when life is beyond your control. Every once in a while, as a preacher, you are able to preach a sermon that truly relates to every, to every listener. Most of the sermons that are preached are often targeted for certain individuals, although they may be encouraging to all who listen. And I'm able to get something out of every sermon, and I try to develop and grow from hearing every sermon, but there are other times when a sermon has been custom designed just for me. Every once in a while, God will give me a sermon that fits 
everyone who will listen to the message, and this just happens to be one of those rare sermons. This is a sermon that will connect and relate to everyone in here from the youngest to the oldest because we all have one thing in common, and that's that we would like being in control of at least some kind. Before you turn me off, hear me good, we all like being in control. Some of us are comfortable only having a certain amount of control. Some of us are obsessed and get drunk with the mere mention of control. And there are those persons who must control everything and everybody. A few of us have figured out that true control is connected to accountability and responsibility, and these are the persons who try to limit what they are given control over. Relationships, make no mistake about it, we all have a proclivity for control. Relationships are based off control, and not all control is necessarily bad. But before I go any further, let me define what control is. Control is to exercise, restrain, or direct influence over it, to have power over, to reduce the incident or severity of. It is to manipulate, handle, and or maneuver. Well, whether we use it or not, we are all engaged in control issues. Can I make this plainer? Even babies are engaged in this control thing. Although they can't talk or walk, they have been given a God-given ability to communicate control. Newborns will cry to gain some control over the situation of their hunger or their discomfort with their diaper. Although they are unable to talk, God has given them the ability to cry, and as their form of communication and a good parent is able to distinguish the different types of cry and know exactly what's wrong with their child. For there is a cry when they are hungry. There's another cry when their diaper needs changing. There's a cry when they are mad. There's another cry when they're just spoiled and don't want to be put down. There's another cry when they are in the arms of someone they're not familiar with. There's a cry when they're trying to get attention. And there's another cry when they are seriously scared or in serious pain. And with each cry, they control the house. Because each cry, until that situation is handled, no one is getting any peace, no one is getting any sleep, no one is getting any rest until their situation has been handled. Well, I hear you saying, Dr. D, I don't have any children, so I don't feel that example. Well, this is a new year, so I have another one for you. Parents and grandparents are often accused of trying to control the lives of their children our grandchildren. Now, there are some cases in which, in which they often try to relive their dreams vicariously through the lives of their children and grandchildren. These parents and grandparents don't allow their children and grandchildren to experience life truthfully because in an effort to shield and protect them, they overextend their efforts, which creates a fake world for their child or grandchild. You see, God has fixed nature that at a certain point, even birds will kick their babies out of the nest so that the bird will be able to handle life. As children, we don't always understand that our parents need a certain amount of control over our lives. For a good parent realizes that they should have the power to direct influence over certain things that will occur in the lives of their children. And if you, even if your child doesn't like it, their job is to influence some control over their children. If you know your child is headed in the wrong direction in life, you are to practice some control over which that child does that you are at least aware of. I'll put it this way. In my parents' house, it went like this. As long as you are under living under my house, under my roof, I'm in charge. In other words, my parents had control over what took place in their house and what was exper expected of us because we were their children and lived in their house. I like to call it parental control. 
as parents, we can't control everything, but we ought to at least have some rules about some things. Uh, we ought to have some rules about what clothes are being to be worn in our house. We ought to have control of which hairstyles will be acceptable in our house. We ought to have control about what time folks are going to go to bed at night and get up in the morning. We ought to have control over what activities will be allowed and seen as respectful in our house and which ones will not be tolerated. We ought to be able to have control over what meals will be available for a healthy balance. At we, we ought to be able to have control over which age will makeup be worn, what age will curfews be set, at what age will phone calls end at night, at what age will dating be allowed, at what age will chores be in place to gauge responsibility, at what age will permission be given to drive the car and to have friends of the opposite sex over, and what boundaries will they be set? At what age will certain language be acceptable and respectable? Once we get grown, whatever we decided to do was up to us, but as long as we were in their house, they controlled their house. Well, what happens when life happens? I have already told you that everyone in here, from the youngest to the oldest, like being in control. All of us like to have some sense of stability in relation to what we do and how we do what we do. Much of life is based on obtaining the status of gaining control. The benefit of gaining financial independence is that one is not controlled by forces outside of one's self resources. Being recession proof means that no one has gained a, one has gained a certain amount of control over their own situation and destiny. And I'm not suggesting this second Sunday of a new year and decade that there's anything wrong with having initiative, discipline, and exercise of control. In life, one of the main signs of growing up is the ability to have some control. 1986, my first wife, Janet Demita Jo Jackson, came out with her third album entitled Control. And with the song, there was the same title, she said, this is a story about control, my control. Control of what I say, control of what I do. This time I'm gonna do it my way. Her hooks then says control, now I've got control to get what I want. Control, I like to have a lot of control. Now I'm all grown up. And then later she sings, she got her own mind, she want to make my own decisions. When it comes to do with my life, I want to be the one in control. Well, decades earlier, old Blue Eyes himself, Frank Sinatra, had also had this same perspective from which was coming the end of his life, and reflecting back, he sung my way. Well, my question and thesis for this sermon today is what happens when life happens? What do you do when you have planned life and yet life begins to take unexpected turns? Is this not what occurred in 2016 when Impeach 45 took office? We left a president with control and respect and now we have a president who believes he's Burger King and will have everything his way and therefore rules and regulations don't apply to him. As a consequence, for the first time in a long time, America is no longer in control, but out of control. And all I'm saying is that in the real life, there will be some problematic predicaments that will leave you feeling as though your hands are tied and you've been knocked to your knees. Life will bring some situations your way that will snare you, causing you to conclude that there is nothing or little that you can do to remedy, resolve, rearrange, let alone resurrect your situation. It's a scary feeling to hit a patch of ice when you're driving because you often lose complete control and you are at the mercy of the ice under your car. And unless you know the turn in the direction that the ice is taking you and you don't slam on the brakes, you will lose control on an icy street. 
because many persons haven't figured that out or have, have not used wisdom enough to slow down, they are often causing or involved in collision. It's no fun when you feel as though others are controlling your life and there is very little you can do to take control of your own situation. Well, DreamWorks came out with a movie about eight years ago, ten years ago, entitled Eagle Eye. Eagle Eye is a movie about Jerry Saw who has his life taken over by situations that were beyond his control and there is little that he can do but follow the directions of those who are now in control of his life. They control where he went, what he wore, and what he would do for at least 48 straight hours. However, there is some good news this morning. God knew that you would be here even though it was icy outside and cold, so I was led to a similar biblical example of life being beyond one's control. Let us recap what has happened in our text. Uh, James, Her Herod had James killed. The Jewish leaders were so pleased that Herod had Peter then arrested. Peter is in jail, but not because he committed a crime, but because of life happened beyond his control. The Bible says the church is praying, but things look pretty bad because tomorrow he goes on trial and will be convicted and ultimately put to death. Remember that all of these things occurred without Peter doing anything to bring them on. Life happened to Peter. Peter is not in jail for breaking the law, but he's in jail because it pleased others to have him in prison. I think I'm talking to somebody right now. There are some folks that are in jail not because they have broken the law, but because it was profitable for others to have them in prison. Peter is in prison for who he followed and what he stood for because it wasn't popular or status quo. He finds himself in prison. Now, there are three events that occurred in the text. We're going to examine it and let you go because we're now in a divisional round of the playoffs. First of all, you got to wake up to your situation. Look at verse six and, seven, 6 and 7. Far too often, we are sleeping about and in our situation. Things are happening all around us, and for whatever reason, we're not paying proper attention because we've fallen asleep at the wheel. How many know that driving at the wheel sleep is just as dangerous as drunk driving? Sometimes God has to turn the light on and hit us. Okay, y'all didn't catch that. Sometimes God has to shake us in order to wake us. Oftentimes, God has to push us to get our attention. Listen to this. Peter is in jail, sleep. The light comes on. The angel hits Peter. He gets up, and the chains fall off. Y'all was watching that Baltimore game last night. Watch this now. In this situation, Peter was chained to who he was sleeping next to. Okay, 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 okay. I think I just helped someone out because you're chained to who you're sleeping next to. God freed Peter in his situation before God freed Peter from his situation. See, Peter was freed from what, whom he was chained to, what, who happened to also be who he was sleeping next to. You cannot continuously sleep in and on your situation acting like what is isn't and what isn't is. At some point, you got to wake up, you've got to see the light, you've got to feel the touch, get up and move on. But then secondly, you got to respond to the word of God. Once Peter woke up, he got up, he got dressed, he dressed himself. He did not wait for someone else to dress him. He took control of his situation by responding to the word of God. See, no one enjoys being pampered more than I do. But I also realized that at some point, there are some things I got to do for myself. We must realize that whenever we listen to the word of God, there is always something that we must do. Even though Peter thought he was dreaming or tripping, he still followed God's directions. 
In other words, even when it's not totally clear what God is up to, we must still be willing to follow the word of God. He went where God had led him, even though the gates were closed and the guards were at their post. Let me say this. God will not lead you to where God will not be able to make a way for you. Oh, y'all got to help me out this morning. It ain't a few of us. So y'all might as well go ahead and say amen. God will not lead you to where God will not make a way for you. I know it may be foggy and hard to see where you're going, and perhaps there's even roadblocks in the way, but I've learned that God still sits high and still looks down low, and from the vantage point, God is able to see further than we can. As he followed God's directions, watch this, doors begin to open for people. Y'all not catching it. As he followed the instructions from the Lord, doors began to open. In spite of those who were standing guard over the doors, they opened anyway. See, as Peter followed God's instructions, doors were open despite the gatekeepers whose job was to keep the doors closed. They opened anyway. Am I talking to someone this morning? God has told you to go forward, go towards the door, but you are too concerned about who's standing at the door. They are intimidating you and have you believing that their job is to keep the doors closed, but the Lord wanted me to let you know that regardless of who's at the door, go towards the door because God is still able to open the door. See, in peace 45, is still the president who's hell-bent on building walls, who's closing doors, but the God I serve is on the throne and is able to knock down the walls and open the doors in peace 45, and his base is trying to keep from others. After Peter realizes what God had done for him, he acknowledged that it was God. And see, sometimes it isn't until after we've experienced a V8 moment that we begin to realize but God. Have you ever been in that situation where a way was made out of no way and you thought maybe it was because you looked good? That wasn't it. You thought maybe because you was pretty smart? That wasn't it. You thought maybe because you had a few dollars to rub together? That wasn't it. The reason why it worked out was because of God. Well, he went to church, I like this, to let others see what God was able to do. Even when life is beyond your control, when life is beyond your control, you ought to still come to church to be a living testimony of what God can do about and in your situation. But then ultimately, I'm going to let you go. This situation was overcame by prayer. See, I didn't mention verse 5, but now I'm going to verse 5 because verse 5 is the linchpin. Verse 5 is the bracket that brings it together. Verse 5 is the knee joint. This is perhaps the key verse in the entire story. Nothing happened for Peter's situation until the church began to pray about it. Someone in here, life is battling you down, and it has gone beyond your control. But you need to begin to pray about your situation and wait on the Lord to move in your situation. See, when life, when life is beating you down, when life has knocked you to your knees and you feel as though your hands are tied, I've discovered that's a pretty good prayer position. May I encourage you to spend more time in prayer about circumstances and situations beyond your control than you do on the phone or social media. I understand that talking about it can be therapeutic. I understand that posting about it may make you feel better, but only prayer and action can actually change circumstances and situations because I've learned this about prayer. I've learned that people of power are people of prayer. Much prayer, much power. Little prayer, little power. No prayer. Can I testify to you today that prayer works and has no limits? For prayer is the tool that God used to develop immature saints. Prayer is the method that God uses to communicate with. 
Prayer is the instrument that God uses to inspire and direct the redeemed. Prayer is the tool that God used as a vehicle to reach the lost and dying souls. Prayer is the medium that God uses to reveal God's complete and perfect will. Prayer is the means to which God uses to supply our needs. Prayer is the tool or procedure that God uses to disclose God's glory and God's grace. Prayer still works with our God, still works with our prayers. When you pray, God will touch and transform. When you pray, God will help and heal. When you pray, God will save and satisfy. When you pray, God will instruct and inspire. When you pray, God will mold and minister. When you pray, God will provide and prepare. When you pray, God will revive and restore. Prayer is a change agent. Through prayer, the powerless become powerful. Through prayer, the helpless becomes assuring. Through prayer, the defenseless become security. Through prayer, the helpless becomes helpful. Through prayer, the restless becomes content. Through prayer, the heartless becomes loving. Through prayer, the worthless becomes valuable. That's why the songwriter says, have a little talk with Jesus. We'll make things all right. And that's my word to you, my brothers and sisters. When life is beyond your control, when life has you feeling there's nothing else you can do, when life has you balled up and confused, when life has knocked you down on your knees, when life has you feeling that there's nothing else you can do, the good news is you got to wake up to your situation. Then you got to be willing to follow the word of the Lord. But then ultimately, you got to learn, my brothers and sisters, to take it to the Lord in prayer. I heard somebody say that if I never had a problem, I wouldn't know that he could solve them. I heard somebody else say when it's late in the midnight hour, I called on the name of the Lord. Is there anybody here this morning that can testify you've tried prayer for yourself? Is there anybody here that will testify prayer still works? I know it's ancient. I know it's old-fashioned. I know it's old school. But I want you to know in the midst of technology, moving from the analog to the dial tone to the cell phone, the line has never been busy before caller ID and before call waiting, you can call on the Lord and he would answer your prayer. Grandmama called on him when you couldn't get through the line. When before we had call waiting, Grandmama called on him. And before Alvin Bell got together and stole somebody's patent and called in the telephone, our slave parents and grandparents called on the Lord. It was Harriet Tubman who called on the Lord. It was our great greats and great greats who called on the Lord. Way in the garden, Jesus called on the Lord. Anybody here have tried prayer? Anybody here can testify that when I called on the Lord, I got an answer. Anybody here has ever had to pray? Didn't know how things were going to work. Didn't know how they were going to turn out. But somehow or another, you begin to get down on your knees and pray, Lord, have mercy. And maybe you didn't have time to get down to your knees because there are some circumstances that won't allow you to get down. There are some circumstances that won't allow a long prayer. It may be a simple prayer. Lord, help Lord, have mercy. And sometimes I've discovered that in this life, I can't get a long prayer out. Sometimes I can't get several words out. But I always remember that when it gets real tough and when it gets real tight, all I have to say is Jesus, and he will make a way. He will come to my rescue. He will come see about me. Is there anybody here 
who called on the Lord. Anybody here that will testify, I tried him for myself. He has answered my prayer. He will answer my prayer. He will. If you know he will, tell him yeah. Tell him yeah. I called on the Lord. He heard my cry. I called on the Lord. He answered my prayer. And when he answers your prayer, you got to do like Peter. You got to say thank you for answering my prayer. Thank you for releasing me from jail. Thank you for stepping in my situation. Thank you for changing hearts. Thank you for changing minds. Prayer works. Prayer works. Prayer works. Prayer works. Prayer works. Prayer works. Anybody here can testify that prayer, prayer still works, still works, still works. I tried him for myself. He answers. He answers. He answers. Prayer, prayer, prayer. Prayer is quicker than email. Prayer is quicker than FaceTime. Prayer is more efficient than Marco Polo because I've discovered that when this light goes out, when the power is gone, your email is stuck in cyberspace. When the power goes out, your email may never get to where it's going. When the satellites go down, your text message may not get to the sent receiver, but nothing can stop prayer. Nothing can stop prayer. There is no power shortage. There is no lost satellite connection. Prayer is a direct line between heaven and earth. I will pray to the Lord. I will thank the Lord. I will talk to Jesus every day. I will tell him all about my struggles. Tell him all about my trials. Tell him all about my troubles. He will. I said he will answer my prayer. Yeah, I tried him. For myself, he will, he will. Anybody tried him? Anybody prayed? Won't he answer prayer? Do I have a witness? He answers prayer. Do I have a witness? He answers prayer. Do I have a witness? He answers prayer. He answers prayer. He answers prayer. Is there one here today? Is there one here today who did not know the Lord and the forgiveness of your sins? If you're here today, do not know the Lord as your Savior. Today is a wonderful day to get to know Jesus. If your life is beyond your control, Jesus is the control master. 
He'll bring order to disorder in your life. Won't you come? If you're here this morning, you are saved, but you do not have a church home, and perhaps you are considering making GMBC your church home. Maybe this was your church home, but you left. For whatever reason, you want to come home back home. We're glad you accept and warmly welcome you back. Won't you come? And if by chance you are here this morning, you are saved, you have a church home, and maybe you just need to reconnect with God. Maybe you felt that the Lord didn't answer your prayer when you wanted him to answer it. And what I've learned is that sometimes God doesn't answer our prayers when we want them answered. But the Lord always has an answer. Sometimes we can't handle the answer God has for us. And so sometimes God makes us wait for the answer. But I'm a living witness that he always answers our prayers one way or another. If you're here today, won't you please come? Fit any of those three categories, unsaved, unchurched, or want to recommit, won't you come? While blood is running warm in your veins, while you still have activity, reasonable activity of your limbs, while you are still enclosed in your right mind, won't you come? Amen. As I look around, we're intimate this morning, and I believe it's safe to say that the house is indeed qualified. May God bless you, and may God keep you, is our prayer. Again, we want to remind everyone that we're going to have the training for the HIV for those that are staying after. We definitely... I know we had over 25 people signed up. I'm not certain how the weather may have affected them, but if you're here, part of that, our presenter is here. They are set up. We want you to be mindful of that. Everyone else, we want you to be careful and wise on your way home. You out in good time. Amen. You ain't got to rush to get nowhere. Amen. It'll be there when you get there. Amen. But we need you to get there safely. We need you to get there soundly. We want you to be mindful again of all the other announcements that are going forth. We're going to ask our mothers now to come. Amen. And those with physical challenges, we're going to ask you to come first. Amen. But we're in good time and not as crowded, so everybody else should be good today. Amen. 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 We thank God. Amen for what the Lord is doing in our church family, how the Lord is blessing us. Amen. Does not mean that there are not trials. Does not mean that we will not face situations like Peter. When things happen beyond your control, that seems to take control of your situation. But verse 5 say, but the church was praying. And whenever there's a church praying, there's power being released. Amen. Whenever the church begins to pray, God is going to respond. Amen. Amen. As our mothers come, now let us look to the Lord. Lord, we thank you now for your blessings. We thank you for your mercy, your love, and your grace. As we prepare to leave this place, Lord, we ask your traveling mercies to be upon us, be with us, that we will arrive where we're going safe in town. Bless those, O oh Lord, who chose to stay in today. Bless them, O oh Lord, that their travel will be blessed. Bless those that are out of town, Lord. Bless those that are in hospitals. Bless those that are sick. Lord, you are able. You've done it before. And we know the power of prayer. And Lord, bless us, Lord, that even when we can't pray for ourselves, that we'll have someone who will pray for us. When life gets beyond our control, let us remember to wake up to our situation, to respond to your word, and to overcome our situation by prayer. We ask your blessings upon us right now in Jesus' name. May the Lord watch between me and you while we are absent from each other. Hug someone and tell them you love them. God bless you.